up last part here for chapter 11 as far as resonance, resonance and standing waves. So I'll review this a little bit before I move on to lab 12, which is the focus of this and up. And I'll go through that a little bit. And what we have here, um, we're looking at standing waves. Now in lab 11, we had standing waves of a vibrating string. You can look at the video for that. We had the fundamental, we have a string fixed, and then we have one anti-node for n equals one, for n equals two, which is fun, you know, frequency is twice that. We have two anti-nodes, one in the middle. For n equals three, which is three times the frequency, we have three anti-nodes, one, two, three, and two nodes. So that is part of chapter 12, 11, uh, lab 11, and part of lab chapter 11. What we're going to be looking at here is uh, standing waves on a, a tube, a vibrating tube. And so what we're going to look at there is uh, a vibrating tube and I'll get the tube out. And what we actually have here is a tube that we uh, can send signals in a frequency, a fixed frequency in at one end uh, through speaker system. And then we either have a closed tube, meaning it's closed at the other end, or an open tube, meaning it's open at the other end. So we're gonna first start with uh, the closed tube as far as doing this lab. And I'm gonna go through uh, how to do that. And this is partially talked about in chapter 12, which will be for the final, the last exam. And this will be on the section on uh, partially musical instruments and such. So we're gonna first look at is the closed tube and the pattern there. So what we have here for a closed tube, is meaning it's closed at one end and as sketched in the lab, in the handout so anyway so what we're going to notice is when we have a standing wave, and the formula for that is going to be given by Fn, uh, where n, n is the number where we go from one to one and so on, times speed b, which is speed of sound, which is 344 meters per second. You can see this in the handout. L is 0.685 uh, meters. That's the length of the tube that we are going to be using here. And let's see. And the formula is NB over 4L. And as we'll see, for chapter 12, which I'll go into a little bit later, for a closed tube, we only have, uh, we have to have certain resonance conditions. One end is gonna be a maximum as far as pressure is concerned. And the only way this can work is if we have only mod, odd multiples. So only if N is, is equal to one, three, five, seven, nine and so on. So all I'll do is go through the table for you for calculating uh, the first one. 
section in. Go from there. Okay. So. So we're going to just round this to 0 0.69 centimeter. So that's about as accurate as we get. And so N will be, so N, uh, so F of N, so F of 1 will be 1 times 344 over 4 times 0.69 and that is, if I get my calculator out, is 125. N is 125 hertz. Right. Then the next one, so that's where you put in the data table uh, for predicted frequency. And this will actually be pretty straightforward since this is 125 and the rest of them are multiples of that. F3, which is the next one, will be just three times that or 375. F5 will be five times that. Will be five times that, so that will be <coughs> six. Let's see, five times. Oh, six twenty-five hertz, and so on. So you fill in the table there. Uh, next, what we'll do, and uh, then what we're going to do is go through the next part of the lab. I will demonstrate with you with the equipment I have, and I'll show you that. Is We'll then do the measured frequency, get the percent error, and then calculate the wavelength. The wavelength is 4L over N, and since we already know 0.69 over 1, then that would be the wavelength 4 times 0.69. 69 is 2.75 meters. So for the rest, fundamental one, it's going to be um, wavelength is 0.275 meters. Now this tube is only a quarter of that. So actually what we're looking at is a quarter of the wave. So we'll see for n equals 1, we actually have to do this. And we only have a quarter. So actually we have is we go up. So the entire wave would be you know, the scale would be four times that. So the length, so this is actually only um, one quarter of a wavelength. And the next one is three quarters of a wavelength five quarters of a wavelength, and so on. So that's the data table for that. And that is uh, for the closed tube. All right, so that's our formula. That's how you complete the data table for your predicted. And then we'll do the analysis next and you'll go from there. Right. Next I'm gonna do is the open tube. An open tube, we just have it open at one end. Have it at both ends because we have to get the sound in that way. Leave this end open. So for an open tube, uh, we have this here now. And in an open tube, our formula is almost the same. It's going to be NV over 2L. L is still that, but because of we have an open tube, we actually get all the modes of frequency. So, and it can be one, two, three, four, five, and so on. So, for n equals one, 
that's now instead of two four we have two so f of one is going to be one times three forty four over two times zero point six nine and that should Um, two hundred four, approximately two hundred and fifty hertz. We can just round it to two fifty, based on the accuracy we have with this equipment. So that's f equals one, f equals two. Again, these are all multiples. It'd be five hundred. Kind of nice how that works. F equals three is seven fifty, and so on. Uh, that's the case there. Now, as far as the wavelength, wavelength will be 2L over N. So that would be 2 times 0.69 over 1 would be 1.38 meters. So instead of for the closed tube, we only had a quarter of a wavelength. For here, It's half a wavelength. So in that case, you have a closed at both ends, and that's what we end up with. So we'll actually have a pressure. So we actually try to measure for the fundamental. We'll actually have this sensor, the microphone sensor, which will slide in and out. So you'll see with the lab when I actually do it, will be there. And so the wavelength, wavelengths are L over two. L three halves. No, oh. right. Uh, two thirds. Uh, L one half. L. So this first one will be L, wavelength to be two times L. Next one will be L. Next one will be two L over three, two L over four, and so on. So that's how you calculate the wavelengths there. Because the wavelength is given by two L over N. So for N equals one, it's 1.38 meters. So again, for the data table, You'll be, we'll measure the frequency, get the percent error, get the wavelength. And then on the back side, we'll just show I've gone through this with the lab. You'll actually compare the pressure. Now we're looking at the pressure, and you can get this book gives some very good examples of this. Uh, this is for the closed tube. For N is one, three, and five. And for the open tube, the pressure. Uh, in the book textbook is one, two, and three. There's a node at both ends. And this is very similar to uh, the kind of pattern you see for a vibrating string. So that is lab 12, uh, as far as that. And the material for this will be allowed for chapter, for exam five. So that's it there for lab 12. And so now we're gonna do is measure <clears throat> the resonant frequency for the closed tube, meaning we have a stopper at one end, and we'll be doing that by uh, adjusting the frequency for the resonant. So we're gonna find the first one, again for a closed tube, only the odd numbers work, odd frequencies work, and we'll measure the frequency on here, and we'll look for a peak in the amplitude on the oscilloscope here. So we can adjust the, the amplitude here and the frequency count here. So with the closed tube, again, we have a maximum 
at the one the end where we have the stopper. And so I'm going to first do n equals one. Find the resonance there. And it is 141 hertz. 141 hertz for n equals 1. All right, so you can write that down on your data table. As far as that, um, you've already explained the predicted ones, so now you can record those. All right, we're now gonna to go to the next one and look for the next one. That would be 387. So for n equals three, we have 387, right? And we're gonna go to the next one after that. So this is n equals three. This will be n equals five. Change the vertical scale. That's six forty seven. That's N equals five. I'll go to the next one. Change the scale so we can get it look better. And that's 897. So for n equals seven, that is 897, so that is seven we've done. Okay, now we're going up to nine. Again, we'll change the scale to get it to fit. And we're only looking for, for relative maximum. We don't care about the actual number. We want to see where we get the maximum. And that is at 11.46. And we'll find the last one, n equals 11. 
Okay, that'll be n equals 11. And that's 1437, 1437 hertz for N equals 11. All right, so that's for the closed tube. All right, next we're going to do is look for the, go back down and sketch the pattern for the tube, and we'll do that by sliding this out once we have the resonance and we're going to be able to sketch a pattern. So I'm going to show you for n equals 1 and this will actually be backwards. So this end here, this end corresponds to that end and over here corresponds to where I pull it out. So right here is where I have the, this all the way at the end corresponds to this end here. So what we're gonna do is get the resonance, so it's back around 140. And then our scale's way off. Really sensitive. 141. All right, now look look at the amplitude here as I pull this out. So for n equals one. All right, notice, and again on this on the pattern here, we're starting from this end and we're gradually going to be pulling it to that end. So notice as we pull it out, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Again, don't worry about the shifting, but just the side, the amplitude as it gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. As you can see, all it does, it goes from maximum to a minimum, which is exactly what we'd expect for n equals one. All right, next thing we're gonna do is go up to n equals three. We're only gonna do the first four modes. Again, we're again just looking for the at maximum right around 387. All right now, what we're going to do is this is for n equals 3. We're starting at this end and we're going to pull out, sketching it that way. Okay, and what we're going to do, notice this gets smaller and smaller and smaller until we get to about, oh, a third of the way down. So we have a minimum. So about a third of the way out, we have a minimum. Then instead of like n equals one, it actually gets bigger again.
at about two thirds of the way out. We're now back to a maximum. And then as we pull it out the rest of the way, we get a minimum again. All right, so we start at maximum, get a minimum about a third of the way out, and then get a maximum again, and then a minimum. So if I was to sketch this roughly on here, it would be something, well, we've already discussed some of these modes, so you can uh, sketch this out yourself. The quiz will be asking you to compare what various images and which one corresponds to which modes. So the next one I'm gonna do is n equals five. You might already guess what that's gonna be. All right, about 645, 646. Then we're gonna do is pull this out. And you'll notice a little bit of the way we get a minimum. Then we get a maximum. And again, this is for n equals five. Then we get a minimum again. Then we get a maximum. So we're using this microphone, special microphone to measure the amplitude as it goes along and then we get a minimum so we go from starting out at the end again that's this side here that we get a maximum minimum maximum minimum and one more maximum before the final minimum all right so you can sketch that, and again, the quiz will be comparing the two different ones there. And then we'll do last, the last one will be for n equals seven. So that was for n equals five. Okay, right around 900. And for n equals seven, we start with one maximum, minimum, a maximum again, that's number two, number three, minimum, number two, minimum, third maximum, another minimum, one more maximum, and then another minimum. So we have four maximums along here. Let's start apply again. Maximum, minimum, maximum, minimum, maximum, minimum, and then find the fourth maximum before the last minimum all right so that is for the clue we're going to just put this sensor in the center and i can show you how that will work we'll do and we'll look we've got the predictive ones already
right, so that's about 252 for the maximum. 252 hertz for n equals one. Okay. And as you can see, if we sketch out the pattern while we're at it, I'll just go straight to that for each one of these. Notice how it gets smaller and smaller at that end. We have a maximum here, and we get a smaller and smaller as we get to the other end, which is precisely what we'd expect for n equals one. So for all of these, we're gonna have a maximum at the center. So this is n equals one. All right, for n equals two, we're gonna walk to six. Alright, we get 500. And for n equals 2, we actually have a minimum, a maximum about a quarter of the way down. Alright, then a minimum, halfway down. And this is much like what we did with the standing vibrating water, vibrating. Okay, so we get a maximum again, and then a minimum. So at the two ends, we have minimum, just like we had a vibrating string. We get a maximum, about a quarter of the way in, a minimum right in the middle, a maximum, and then a minimum. So that's for n equals two, and you can sketch the pattern there and compare it for the quiz. And I'm going to go to n equals 3. Okay. Again, we're not worrying about the scale this way or that way. We're just looking at the relative. And we get about seven. Looks like about 743. Yep. Right. And then if you look at the pattern, minimum, maximum, minimum, Maximum, as we slide it out, minimum, one more maximum, and then another minimum. So other than the two anti-nodes, two nodes at the ends, we have three anti-nodes. and two nodes. Again, this corresponds almost precisely what we have with the vibrating string for lab four. Lab 11, I should say. All right, then we're gonna go up to n equals 12. I um, n equals four, I should say. And I'm not gonna sketch out the pattern anymore.
and that's 984, 984. Okay, so that's N equals four. And I'll just show you what the pattern basically looks like. We should have uh, four antinodes, one, two, as I slide it out, three, at the scale as it gets bigger, four coming up, four anti nodes, and then back to the last node. Okay, so that's n equals four, we get 983 hertz. I'll go up to n equals five. And we get 1,211, or 1,214. Okay, 1,214. And then the last one will be N, so that's N equals five. And looks like fourteen ninety seven, fourteen hundred ninety seven. Okay, or n s n equals six. That's n equals six now. N equals six. So that's we've now done all six modes. Uh, we've sketched them out. This is for the open tube. 